Good morning, students and teachers. Today, as we enjoy the Word of God together, I want to encourage you to open your hearts and minds to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you will allow God into your life today as you consume the message that will be shared. But before I share, I want to play you a video of a man who chose to overcome his obstacles in life, his challenges, and to be a light for someone else. Because of this choice, he touched a life, and in turn was touched by that person's life. Have you ever been in a situation where you know you could have helped someone, cared for them, supported them, made a difference in their life, yet you did not? And then afterwards, you actually felt guilty about it, maybe realizing that you could have done something, you could have been there, you could have cared for that person. Maybe there was a beggar on the street who needed prayer. Maybe a classmate who you could see needed a friend, but you did not go to offer them that help, to be of service to them, and to care for them and to offer them a hand of friendship. Let's watch this short clip and to see what a 13-year-old boy did to touch a life and to change one person's life for God. The man speaking in the video is this 13-year-old boy and he is telling the story about what happened in his life. So let's just watch this video. I grew up in New Orleans. My mother worked as a daycare assistant at the Jewish Community Center. The man that I was told was my father was a carpenter and a functional alcoholic. He was abusive to my mother and I, not more than a baby herself, when she married this man, she tried her best to protect me from him. But with no life skills of her own, she did what she knew how to do. Friday was payday for him, so he would come home happy, but that was short-lived. He would go out and return a few hours later drunk and angry, yelling and fighting her. As I look back over my life, there were many people that had a hand in shining light into my darkness when I was growing up. I had just started junior high school, and in order for me to get to high school, I had to walk through the drug dealers, literally step over the horse and the drug addicts, walk through a graveyard, then in the next block past gang members, and then go through the projects, and then come to a six-lane intersection, and it was always busy, but just beyond that was the school. Well, one day as I'm approaching this intersection, I hear this voice saying, will someone help me cross? He was in a suit. He had a cooler in a hand and a folded lawn chair in one hand and his cane in the other. Will someone help me cross, he said. People kept ignoring him, walking past him with their busy lives. We were poor, but we were busy. I don't know why poor people are so busy. <laughs> I said, I'll help you in my 13-year-old changing voice. He said, well, thank you, son. May I have your shoulder? I said, yes, sir. He said, don't trick me now. I said, no, sir, I won't. We crossed the street. I asked him where he was going. He told me that he was going to, uh, to my school to sell perline candies to the kids. So I helped him to the school, and he said, thank you. And he told me that God would bless me for my kindness. He and I became friends. We took that walk every day. I came out of school one afternoon and there he was sitting outside in that lawn chair selling praline candies, 25 cents. And I saw one of the kids try to buy candy, right? And they gave Mr. Butler a dollar and they told him it was a $5 bill. I stepped in and I said, Mr. Butler, this is a scam. Needless to say, I had a lot of enemies at that school, but it didn't matter. I was glad to do it. You see, Mr. Butler was one of the first men in my life to see me. And what made it all the more special is that he was blind. He was a point of light. One morning I was late meeting him and as I walked up to the intersection, I could see Mr. Butler standing there, not saying a word. So I tipped up behind him and I said, I said, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna wait to see what happens. He said, I know you're there, son. I said, yes, sir, I am. I said, I didn't hear you saying, will someone help me cross? He said, no, I was listening for you. I said, you were? He said, yes. Sometimes in life, son, when you pray and you've said all you can say, 
All you have to do is stand and wait and listen. What a point of light he was. There are many people in this world that are wanting, waiting, saying, asking, begging, hoping. Will someone help me cross? We all have the power to be a point of light. Isn't this video a powerful reminder of how we can, through doing one act of kindness, touch the lives of others forever? As you watch the video, you may have picked up a few things, and I just want to name and list four things that came out of this video. Here are the four things. One, it does not matter what our background is or where we have come from. We can make a difference for others by choosing to do right and to do good and to serve. The man telling the story in this video, he came from a tough home background. He had a father who was an alcoholic. He had a father who abused him, who didn't treat him well. He didn't even treat his wife well. Yet this young man decided to change someone else's life. He didn't allow his home circumstance of his father's situation, his family's situation, to stop him from doing good. And then secondly, he rose above his circumstances. He lived in a poor neighborhood. You might have seen the neighborhood that he was living in. It was really down and out. There were gangsters. There were people involved with drugs. There were drug lords. And he could have got himself involved in that lifestyle. Now, considering what he came out of family-wise, he could have chosen to have become a drug addict. He could have chosen to get involved in the wrong gangs and the wrong groups. But he decided not to. He decided that he would make a difference. And it never stopped him from doing good. And then thirdly, he heard a call from someone in need. So often we see and hear people around us who simply need a helping hand a caring gesture, someone to speak to, maybe someone to pray with them, a simple act of kindness, and we choose to ignore them. And afterwards, well, we think about it again. But this man, he heard the call. He heard there was a man who needed help. This person on the side of the street, a blind man, needed support, needed someone to take him across the road. And he heard the call of that man. What did the man say? I need someone to help me. Is there anyone who can help me? And he definitely heard the call. But fourthly and finally, he didn't only hear the call, he responded to the call. As that blind man was waiting to cross the road and others were ignoring him, this 13-year-old boy chose to hear the call and responded to the man's need to cross the road. It did not matter that this man wore a suit, that this man was older than him, and you probably find that this man had a loud voice because he was probably asking people, help me, I want to get across the road. So he probably had quite a loud voice. But this 13-year-old boy chose not only to hear the call, but to respond to the need rather than be afraid of it. This man was blind. This man needed care. This man needed help. And this young boy, at 13, helped him across the road. You also heard in the video that that set up a long life relationship between this young boy and this man. And I can imagine they spent many hours conversing together and helping each other through situations. What do we get out of this? You are never too young, or in the case of the senior students, too cool to be a light for someone else. God wants us to be a light. God wants us to be of service. God wants us to care for people. In this video clip, the, sta the, the speaker states that there are many people in life who are waiting, begging, and saying, will someone help me cross over this issue? Will someone help me to get through this problem? Then he goes on to say that 
We all have the power to be that someone who will help. We all have the ability to help others cross over and get it through their challenges. As Christians, we are called to rise up, to hear the call, to hear the call of others, and to respond to their call as witnesses for Jesus. God has given you the opportunity to infect the lives of others with his love, to be that light to offer support, to care, to give a helping hand, to share the word, and to pray for others. Each one of you in the school, whether you're in the primary school as a little child, or whether you're in the high school, or whether you're a teacher, we have the presence of Christ in our lives to share with others in their time of need. Through this weekend, and in the days to come, why don't you ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes and your ears to those around you, and to point you in a direction where you can touch someone's life. Even today, as you spend time at school, choose to reach out to someone with a good deed, an encouraging word, and an act of kindness. But don't leave it there. When you go home, look for opportunities to witness the love of Jesus Christ to others. That will make the difference in your life as well. What needs to happen? It's quite simple. Open your eyes, open your ears to see and to hear the call of someone around you who desperately needs the love of God. I want to end off today's message by reading a verse, in fact a few verses from Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46. It talks about those who choose to serve others and the reward and to those who do not choose to serve. Let me read it quickly for you. And it comes from Matthew 25 and it's called the sheep and the goats. Quietly listen to this. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will gather before Him, and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right, and He will put the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by the Father, Take your inheritance, for the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison. And you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we feed you? When did we see you thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick? Or when did we see you in prison and visited you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for those of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And I want to encourage you students, are you one of the shepherd's good sheep? Are you the one who is going to be there to feed the hearts of those who need God's love? To offer your presence of God's presence that others will come to know him because of your love for them? and your care for them. I pray that you will be blessed today as you serve God and that you remember that others are out there who desperately need the love of God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we just start this day with you, we thank you, Father God, that we can serve you. We thank you, Father God, that as your sheep, we can offer others the support they need. Lord, as a primary school tutor, child, if I'm in the class, by being a wonderful help to my teacher, to my friends, of being a servant, to the high school students, Father, to touch the life of someone else through prayer, 
through heartfelt care for them, being there when students are struggling, to us as teachers that we can be there to serve you, Father God, and to bring love to the lives of others. So, Father, I pray that as this man helped a blind man across the road, we too will help those who need your love, that you will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless your day and have a great day. Thank you.